हेलो नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू एन सी आर इज लाइव इंट्रैक्शन दिस इज सिमरन सिंह एंड यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग दिस थ्रू पी एम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व और यू माइट ऑल्सो कनेक्ट विद अस टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल दैट यू ऑल नो इट इज एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल इट्स अराउंड फोर पी एम ऑन योर वॉच एंड एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम वी हैव आर वेबिनार सेशंस सो फॉर टूडे आर सेशन इज रिगार्डिंग साइबर सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी वेल इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ वेबिनार सीरीज दैट हैव बिन रनिंग फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम and today we will talk about email and browser safety and to make this particular topic and its understanding more easy for all of you we are also joined by an expert let me introduce her to you we have with us miss karanpreet kaur namaskar ma'am namaskar ma'am thank you so welcome much welcome to ncrt thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am is the project engineer at applied information security division cdac has joined in from mohali viewers if you have any of the questions feel free to reach out to us at our contact number that is there on your screens it is 8800440559 in case if you have any queries you have any feedback any of the messages to share regarding this particular topic that is email and browser safety then you can also write to us at our mail id that is there on your screens it is training.helpdesk@ciet.nic.in yes miss karanpreet ma'am what all we will be studying under this particular topic that is email and browser safety so this is very descriptive descriptive uh, you know very important as well as very descriptive session of browser security and email security we'll be uh, going into the deeper depth we will dive in a deep you know what exactly security is and how we can implement it in our daily life so it is going to be very interesting session i hope and sure let's get started definitely ma'am so taking over from you so we will be starting with browser and email security wherein we will first see what web browser is like in our day to day life we use internet Do, don't we use we are like surrounded with smart devices these days and one of the major operation all the major operations of this internet is done with the help of browsers only like whenever we open our laptop or our desktop whatever we have to search whatever we have to browse we use web browser for that right you can say web browser is a kind of software which help us to uh, get contact with the world wide web or we can say internet right we can access information we can access various resources uh, so we can say it's a it's a kind of software application which is used to trace and display the web pages right so this is one of the uh, very important uh like you can say part of or insignificant part of uh, uh the services wherein uh internet uh, is having web browser and without web browser we cannot reach to any of the information right so it is bringing the information from the resources to the user as well as uh, we actually enter into the url first that url being entered by us as we all know we have got https dot uh, let's say any uh, google dot com right so that http is basically a protocol in that proto protocol when we talk about this entire url this url is actually uniform resource locator or uh, another kind of uh, you can say subset of url is uh, uri which is uniform resource identifier right it can be anything which we want to uh, find out any image any video anything even in uh, not only in uh, like desktops and laptops but on mobile phones also we access information with the help of these web browsers so you see uh, these web browsers are very important and these web browsers have uh, an important thing which is known as url which help us to communicate with the internet right so various web browsers as we all know are uh, like microsoft edge google chrome internet explorer safari and mozilla firefox we know each and every uh, kind of browser these days you can't say that any one of one browser is more you know safe in terms of security and the another one is not it is not like that each one of them is having their own you know uh, uh, plus and minuses right so why we need to know why we uh, have to secure our web browsers 
what kind of insecurity are we having from the web browser you see uh, on this in this entire world we are about 4 billion people are using internet right now right more than 4 billion people so you see when uh, each one of us are using internet with the help of web browsers the attacker might have perspective that why don't i crack or attack this browser in order to attack the uh, user right in order to attack the nay very very innocent and unaware users so these computers are uh, actually attacked through browsers when they are weak so we need to be aware like we should not make these browsers weak we should not use weak browsers we will have to make a, a like small uh, you can say awareness we have will have to enhance our awareness we'll have to be uh, use few extensions that we will discuss in this session so as to make a web, web browser more secure so first of all we need to uh, you know uh, discuss why to secure the web browser so many computer users are not aware to click the web links first of all we being an unaware users whatever links comes to the, our screen we just click it right we don't know the significance of those web links what what can be the drawbacks of clicking those web links uh, moreover whenever we open the open any website if some third party software package is installed uh, to it it increase the you can say weakness in that browser okay whenever like for example if i say i need to uh, download a movie right and uh, it is free of cost i am getting it from the uh, you know this uh, browser on the browser i entered like any xyz.com and on that uh, website i'm having free uh, movies i am getting free movies but along with those free movies i first have to uh, you know uh, install a software first of all and only then i can go for that downloading movie so i go for that i just click okay without thinking anything that uh, what that software is going to do what what is the requirement of that software why uh, that particular website is asking me to download it right I just want to download the movie, but that software is accompanied with it. Uh, will it be having any, you know, uh, bad uh, impact on my system? Will it be uh, hacking my system? Uh, we don't think about it. We are like thinking about like, okay, I need that movie. Whatever I need to do with it, I will do it, right? So many websites require the user which enable features also or to install more software or third party software which doesn't get security updates right now these softwares which are installed do not have security updates which add into the risk or the weakness to your web browser okay so this is uh, the reason why we need to configure our web browser securely why we need to secure our web browsers in order to secure ourselves in order to secure our operating system, in order to secure our computer system, in order to secure our information which is stored on the computer, right? So for this reason, we need to uh, secure our web browser. So these days we all know that we are using web browsers and uh, these web browsers, all, all the XYZ, whatever uh, you, you know, whatever web browsers, we install all of them on the computer, right? and uh, we configure them securely it is the first and the foremost requirement that we must configure them in order to assure the security of our web browsers so you see if we do not configure them accordingly it's like uh, the cyber hygiene cannot be there okay like in our day-to-day -day life in the morning we uh, get up and we brush our teeth we have bath right uh, we wear fresh new clothes right so we do this thing daily right if someone do not do all these daily routine things what will happen okay. have you imagined what will happen if someone is not going to take bath if, if someone is not going to brush his teeth or not going to change his clothes daily it will lead to obviously his physical hygiene and later uh, his health issues will be there right similar is the case if in browser 
security or even if in any kind of security we are not maintaining any kind of security we are not configuring any part of our uh, internet services as well it is going to uh, invite various threats all over the world the attackers will uh, tend to attack uh, you if you are not cyber uh, hygiene if you are not having cyber hygiene okay so there are various threats that that we are going to discuss right now many users have a tendency to click on the links without considering the risk of this action so the web pages also uh, a web page addresses are there which we uh, we assume that this is the regular like somewhere it is written for facebook.com there is some ip address which is given okay you click on this ip and you will get into the home page of uh, facebook.com but that exactly is not uh, like you can say the exact expected website it is some unexpected website okay you are actually disguised there you are uh, tricked over there okay so these are very small things that we need to uh, take care of so that we we may not fall into the trap and we may not uh, face more enhanced vulnerabilities right so new security uh, vulnerabilities have also been discussed since the software was configured and packaged by the manufacturer here a bundle of advanced softwares uh, are there in the software packages which increases the number of vulnerabilities okay so if the vulnerability increase vulnerabilities are basically the weaknesses the weaknesses in the softwares the weaknesses in the browser right so if these vulnerability increase on definitely the threat or the attacks will also be increased so how do we avoid them in order to avoid this first of all uh, we must assure that the third party software uh, should not have it should not be installed on our system right i'll tell you in the upcoming slides that how we can uh, avoid or how we can enhance the the security or strength of the browser right one of the method is adding plugins to your browser so plugins are what plugins are basically applications which are intended for the use in the web browser like we have adobe flash right this is an example of application which is available as a plugin right we are having ample number of plugins that we do to enhance our browser right one example is adobe flash but now on the basis of security what should we do right uh, we should add up few plugins that i'll tell you what kind of plugins first of all you must be clear that what plugins are right i hope the picture is clear that what plugin is right further we have cookies the another important thing is uh, as we know that the attackers are looking for all the browsers to be weak and they need to attack those browsers and they get their uh, work done so the another basic thing which uh, you know which uh, uh, strengthens uh, the which which weakens the strength of the uh, browsers are the cookies now if you have ever uh, given a small kind of you know uh, if you have ever seen uh, like whenever we go to our browser we just enter google.com and whatever you have searched in there it is given in the drop down right or even if you see the url if you enter something into the url whatever the recent uh, like websites you have visited it is Uh, it is seen in the drop downs right so what exactly this is that means the browser is keeping an eye on us right that means it is it, it is uh, like we are not being harmed by this like uh, we do not get affected with this because it is not a big information right but you see at some place or uh, at like might be after some time we will be get we will get affected okay so for this reason cookies were actually uh, you know came into picture what are cookies first of all cookies are uh, the basic you can say session information with which you uh, with which the internet remembers you it recalls you like for example uh, if i go to a subway 
right uh, now every time i go to subway i have to make a sub i go to that and that uh, uh, person who is making the sub for me i have to tell him put this sauce put that sauce put this ingredient put that ingredient but it will be a bit easier because if i am a regular customer of subway and i need to eat that particular sub only each time that person who is cooking for me will will be easily will able he will be able to uh, you know uh, remember me or recall me easily if he is having a card so cookies in the internet or in the browser plays a similar role uh, like they tell us uh, like they store our information right uh, like to which website or what kind of behavior uh, of mine as a user to the browser i am having right it will also help me in remembering the credentials uh, what kind of sites i am you uh, know used to uh, uh, accessing right like for example if on amazon.com i have uh, visited one of the apparels or some home decor kind of thing that website is going to show me those taste similar tastes of things only right so it is basically they are doing behavior analytics right and cookies plays a big role in it right so these cookies are designed like that only by the website uh, that they may give the information they may uh, you know uh, put an eye on you like what you are doing what is your behavior so this is another thing which adds into the vulnerability okay so session cookies if not clear if these cookies are not clear when the browser is closed uh, another person who is using the system or might be who is stealing your cookies can get access to whatever information you are gathering or whatever information you are accessing including your credentials also okay so cookies actually are implemented for the uh, benefit of the user only but they can be misused also if they are not handled or sanitized properly okay so uh, before leaving or before uh, closing the browser you must clear those cookies or clear your history okay so that uh, these cookies should not be carried out in the next session okay right? so i hope this picture is also clear like first one was plug in and then the cookies these are the two things that we have to take care about and then the third thing is extension now extension is another very important and very useful feature which is added to the browser they actually modify or they uh, you can say actually they add some new functionality to your browser like for example if I, if i uh, if i want to add a security and privacy uh, to my browser uh, you have to give few permissions and uh, there will be no problem after that okay so Uh, this is another very important extension which i am going to tell you it is https everywhere you see uh, we all know that we have to use https instead of http in url when we talk about a url it is always having a protocol we all know this we all use internet we know it works on the protocol way based on it is based on the protocol basically that is tcp ip protocol and one of the important protocol which accompanies tcp ip protocol is http protocol which is hypertext transfer protocol right now many of us are still using http protocol only many of the websites are still using http only though their number their rate their percentage is decreasing right now but with the advent of security feature we have started using https right but few websites still exist which uses http only right so in order to make them more secure we have a uh, an extension which is used in the chrome right its name is https anywhere everywhere sorry so this https everywhere is actually a website protocol right we all know it like it has a, a basic functionality of uh, encrypting the data whatever we are sending to the network the that data that information gets encrypted right so when it gets encrypted if we are uh, using http function or http protocol even then our uh, 
you know uh, the information is getting encrypted so it will rewrite the request you send to any website you want to visit in chrome so uh, you can be sure that the browser produces a secure version of that site so this is how you will install or you will add this extension to the chrome right uh, at number 1 you can see here like uh, there is add to chrome right you will enter the web chrome, uh, chrome web store you will add extension right here you will say add extension and then in the next uh, place you can see https everywhere is installed over here right this one and it will whatever data you you will be sending it will be sent in the encrypted form right you will click this http everywhere is on if it is on it will start working and everything will be encrypted right so in this way you can uh, add up security into your browser another kind of uh, uh, browser for uh, firefox or mozilla browser here clearing browsing data this is like whatever you are browsing on your web browser this particular extension will clear uh, whatever you have browsed you need not to you know delete something from the history you need not to uh, clear anything from your uh, cookie you need not to clear your cookie it will do everything for you right so these were the two extensions which we uh, just discussed the one was uh, clearing web browser history and the another one was http s everywhere right now yes, the third one is netcraft uh, before proceeding netcraft. in this session i would just like to inform you that we are still left by 30 minutes in this webinar session if you have any of the questions viewers feel free to write to us at our mail id that is training.helpdesk@cit.nic.in yeah ma'am you may proceed thank you so much ma'am another extension is netcraft this is again this will provide you protection from uh, phishing and malicious javascript okay so this is how you will install it just enter it into the google right netcraft extension and it will uh, uh, give you this page wherein you will be having at the right side of your screen you can see add to chrome and once you add it to the chrome then you will get a report for each and every website you visit it will give you protection from phishing as well as other malicious uh, you can say attacks right so in this way you can download the uh, report from the net uh, craft website also for you then next thing that comes into picture is pop ups okay that the browser have a small window pane which actually opens out Uh, on your browser it shows advertisement uh, which can be from ligmate uh, company if we click it uh, it can uh, lead to serious attacks or it can be some dangerous uh, software so being a part pop ups can ads can be a part of phishing scam as well so it will reveal your personal uh, maybe cookies also maybe your personal information also financial information also so the tips for these are that you need to install the required extension only do not install so many uh, extensions uh, only see that whether you are using those extensions which you have installed or you are using those extensions regularly or not if you are not using just remove those okay and a very important thing is that these extensions must be uh, installed and downloaded from the official stores only okay so these are these are a few tips that how we can uh, secure our web uh, browser with the help of extensions with the help of you can say uh, various plugins that we discussed so another way is, is we need to have a security zone we need to just go for the trusted websites and uh, the very important thing is that we should go for private browsing right this is another very important thing that we need to do uh i'll show you how to do private browsing so that other than you no one will get a track on uh, what you are uh, like what you were surfing on the browser right uh, for adding the privacy settings you should go to uh, first of all uh, let me tell you first of all you need to go to privacy settings of your web browser okay when you go to the privacy settings uh, here are few things which you can do Uh, you can go for enhanced tracking protection also you can go for standard and this is strict one where where there is stronger protection okay so you can uh, 
make your settings accordingly right uh, from this another thing uh, that i want to explain you is use ignito mode okay whenever you will uh, go to your browser there will be a uh, uh, you know ignito mode option that go to ignito window incognito window right that will lead to uh, this is more secure thing because it do not uh, you know save your history it do not save your cookie and even your browser is not tracking uh, like what you are accessing so go for it okay another uh, important uh, thing another important browser you can say is where you can search privately is duckduckgo okay incognito window and duckduckgo are entirely the same thing okay they do like this only they do not track whatever you are doing okay you can directly go to uh, duckduckgo.com wherein whatever you will browse it will not be tracked at all okay you can see here it is private search okay tracker blocking site encryption it is really safe you can add it to the browser as well. okay then further we have email security now if we talk about email we all know that without email we can not even think of in our offices in our schools in our colleges educational institutes emails are must these days when we are like uh, fighting with pandemic uh, our entire work because of the automation and online uh, kind of thing we need emails a lot okay so in order to transmit messages we need emails in order to communicate we need emails right so we must make first of all we first we must make the password policy now what this password policy is when we talk about email we are having a username and a password obviously we all have right let it be any gmail account any yahoo mail account any redix mail account right so when we talk about your mail id your mail id and your password and then you sign in this password should be very strong okay so the password policy includes that you need to protect your password it should be very strong it should be a combination of capital letters small letters alphanumerics and numbers okay so you see how uh, email functions actually there is an author who is the client like if i am sending the message i am sending the email then i would be the author or the client okay then further i'll be sending my email through this protocol named as smtp that is simple mail transfer protocol okay so this protocol with the help of this agent named mail submission agent it will submit my email and transmit it transmitter agent will transmit it through the internet For, um, then further uh, the receiver agent it will further send it to the mail store and delivery agent and then further two more protocols will be used pop and imap right this pop and imap protocols helps to you know receive the email or for sending email the, these two protocols are used if i am going to send it to a client like a uh, single individual then these two protocols will work otherwise if i am sending it to the browser again http will work okay so further this particular email will be stored into the mail store so you see this is the basic fundamental system architecture like how an email is made and how it gets transmitted and received uh, to the another end okay at the receiver end so in this way it is transacted then further we have an email server we all know this these whatever messages we need to send it is sent to the email through the email server now what this email server do it is similar to the normal other servers but whenever we see we say that uh, we are like in the previous uh, slide also whenever we say that we send the message like here we use smtp here we use pop and imap at this place and at this place the email servers come into the picture right so you see the email comes into the picture twice if the email is sent over internet to the remote destination if the sender email that sends the email over internet at first and then at the receiver side when it receives the email 
okay so in this way email server plays an important role now next we need to understand what are these two protocols one protocol was pop protocol another one was im imap right so pop as you can see is a post office protocol right it will be applicable when we have to check our mail only on one computer no other devices there while imap is like when you you can use it on multiple computers similarly the mails are stored on the computers that you use and in that it is stored at the server okay and here uh, if you talk about pop then pop use to store your mail locally on your pc not at mail server while this one uses it to store on the mail server okay so this this is the difference between two you can distinguish between two when when we talk about using one computer then we go for pop and when we have to uh, go for multiple computers uh, email is going to be stored at the server then we go for imap okay so uh, for multiple instances imap is recommended now risk involved in this is like we can have hacker can send us spam mails fake mails lottery mails phishing mails and many other things right these can be dangerous uh, because we being an unaware user we will just uh, you know hop into those uh, spam emails and fake emails and uh, we can get you know uh, really our security can be hampered this is an example of fake email sent by you, you can see facebook.com this kind of uh, domain this kind of mail id never exist so if you are getting an email from any kind of uh, you can say address like this maybe facebook.com or uh, instagram.com so these are fake these are totally fake and if there is an attachment you see facebook password dot zip then this is definitely going to be some virus or some malware okay if you uh, unzip this folder your entire system will be hacked another example of this is uh, here you can see this looks like it is sent by the paypal but this uh, is not actually uh, from the paypal it is like you can say see the uh, name you can see omni uh, on microsoft.com right or ppl.com right so these itself uh, reveals if we uh, take care like from what is the destination or what is the source you can easily get onto it you can easily uh, verify that this is some attack then another thing this is email uh, phishing attack as we all know phishing is like uh, here you can see an example here supply chain update into the context of corona virus covid 19 and something is written like some unexpected circumstances were there and email look like that it is delivered from who right it looks like it is delivered from who which is very standard um, and authorized company from the who regional office of americas right but if you see their official website and, and from where it is coming this is you can easily recognize that this is not the um actual mail this is just a phishing email okay similarly we got many promotions uh, promotional codes and many discounts under the covid situation wherein here in this example a macbook is being uh, given special corona virus offer it's not for 590 it's just for 390 dollars and the moment you will add it into the cart and make uh, you know a kind of transaction you will never get an a macbook here okay so these are all frauds similarly and particularly when we example. talk about email safety there are a lot of promotional emails that right. nowadays people right. receive then how could one ensure whether or not that particular email is safe or one should open that or not first of all if this email uh, whosoever is the sender if you are you do not know the sender you should never go for these kind of mails you should never even open these mails mark as spam and just uh, get them away okay so these emails are not at all safe you cannot assure that what is in, in it like this mail here you can see face mask and hand sanitizer scam here you can see 
you add to the card the moment you add to the card you enter your you know whatever things your credentials and it is gone everything is gone here another example here corona safety mask these masks they have asked you to download the app you may never know that this is a particular app only or it is something else it can be a malware also whatever you are downloading you are not sure like uh, what is what this will download okay so be aware uh, to such kind of things it may have malicious attachment to it you may uh, feel like i am opening a brochure of a particular website a brochure of let's say a macbook right but it is not actually a macbook brochure it can be uh, some malicious email attachment which can be dangerous for you it can be some rat that is remote access trojan right so all these things you need to be very aware just click those things which you are sure of that okay this person need to send me this mail with this attachment today and that is why i am opening it because it belongs to that person only any unknown thing you need not to click never click any unknown uh, link any unknown email any unknown attachment which you are doubting never do so okay another important thing is um, many a times we don't pay attention but uh, like here you can see there is something written in some you know uh, other language and then there is mpc sometimes there is a file name Uh, wherein dot php dot one two three when there is double extension, okay, you are looking for it. There are double extension like it is either dot docs or dot mp three or dot jpg. But when something suspicious like this is there, that means it is definitely having virus. Okay, so never ever go for it. Never ever uh, even click those or uh, you know extract those things. the next thing which is uh, uh, like hoaxes hoaxes is an attempt wherein we have a, we have like we are uh, uh, given a picture wherein we feel like it is truth it is not uh, like we do not create any kind of doubt in our mind we will get an, an email also from government side and we will uh, get a uh, message also from government side under the name of government they'll be sending us message along with this this link maybe this link is like this only but whenever you will click it it will uh, send you or it, it will take you to some wrong website okay some malicious website so the moment you click to it the moment you entered that website your entire system is you know uh, it will be remotely controlled by someone else so you see when technology is in, uh, like technology is growing it is evolving these kind of uh, trap holes are also in evolving okay like this is sms phishing and wishing right here again the similar kind of covid outbreak is there and a message uh, and, and a uh, link is given over here here in this portion they have given you some uh, something to download that is corona virus safety the moment you will download this is virus okay because you see here who.dashpc.com no such email id exist like this okay so you need to be very vigilant by using or while clicking these uh, links over emails so these are the precautions which you should use uh, you should use https before every url do not click anything which you do not know never open any attachment or download file when you receive email id you need to check it personally along with that use anti virus or anti spyware and a, um, if you are using window use window defender right or firewall software you should use um, you can even use vpns okay those are also safe if you want to update your browser you need to update your browser also from time to time if you do not do so you will be easily getting into you know enabling the phishing and all okay so uh, do not separate your uh, use separate uh, email accounts for the things like shopping and all whenever we uh, go for some uh, applications or some you know you need to segregate your email ids also if you are using it for the official purpose 
you should use different uh, email id and for the other things like your other uh, you can say some shopping uh, thing or some other personal thing you should use a separate account for the same right so you need to be safe you need to check that whether if you are using a bank account then that particular https should be there right this is how you can maintain the security of the browser okay then further there are filter you need to filter your emails for filtering emails uh, this entire uh, you can say steps you need to follow and you can filter your emails as well the spam emails sometimes come to the email box also you can easily filter those right you need to check your privacy settings in privacy setting as i told you in the previous slides we have already discussed this things that the content which you do not need to handle you can go for standardized protection or enhanced protection or strict protection okay so privacy setting you also need this was the thing i was telling you like there is income tax india.gov.in this is an official website but if someone is uh, addressing you for income tax department of india with this ip this is a fake website it looks like it is an official website because it's having gov.in taxation iti india index right it looks like an original one but it is a fake website so we need to be very vigilant okay so uh, another thing we can also check the website reputation also that whether this particular website is a good website or not this is the url that you can see www.urlvoid.com on this particular website any website that you feel like maybe it is a uh, it is malicious or not on this particular website you can see uh, the reputation of this of any website okay so this is another very important website reputation checker all the black blacklisted websites and threat analysis is done on this you will get safety report also that okay whatever website you were looking for is good enough to use okay so before getting access to any unrealistic or fake websites you should go for this urlvoid.com okay here you can easily check that whether this particular website is good or not okay here you will enter it like here you will enter your url and scan the website if it is good enough it will tell you it will give you report that this is safe like here i have done it for amazon.in right and amazon.in is a safer one so here here it gives all the details of the analysis okay so this is another very important and good uh, you can say uh, a kind of check where you can uh, check the reputation of the website you are going to access then further another important thing is email header like we uh, like you were asking just now that how to uh, differentiate between the original uh, email senders and uh, original advertisement like normal advertisement and a fake or malicious advertisement this is how you, you can check here we have email header i just give you a demonstration for that i hope uh, you can see my screen yeah it is visible <coughs> okay so let's say i'm having any this is my email id and i am just clicking on any email you can see here show originals on this these dot dots you have show originals so when Ma'am, you it's open not, it it's not it's not visible to us can you try sharing your screen Viewers, if you have any of the questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment box of NCERT official. Besides, here is our contact number for all of you on the screens. It is 8800-440-559. And if any of your doubts remain unanswered, then we also have our mail ID. You can always write to us at training.helpdesk at the rate ciet.nic.in. Yes, Ms. Karanpreet, I hope, madam, I am audible to you. 
all right till we prepare the connections i have important information for all of you this particular session is a webinar and we conduct it on a regular basis from 4 pm till 5 pm if you have any of the questions then we have different mediums where you can reach out to us apart from that after this webinar session we'll be having sahyog and this particular session of sahyog after 5 pm it is regarding guidance for early career planning apart from that you can also enjoy uh, international webinar which is on toys and games to play make and learn yes miss karanpreet could you hear me all right i would like to inform our viewers that this particular webinar session was titled as email and browser safety where we had word with miss karanpreet kaur regarding web browser understanding regarding the threats from different softwares and also plugins cookies and she was also explaining about one of the most important areas that is be cyber safe in your environment this was our webinar session and we request you to stay connected with ncrt namaskar